So welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Sajid, and I am the country manager of the Start on Bangladesh, a program of the Start Network. We are delighted that you can join us today to celebrate the achievements of Start on Bangladesh. We have over 100 representatives from members, donors, and different stakeholders from across the country and around the world. We are incredibly grateful for your time and interest. First, some housekeeping from our side. So everyone apart from the speakers have been placed on mute until the question and answer session, where we kindly ask you to post your questions in the chat and we will then unmute you and ask you to repeat your question. Please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat and please change your name on the Zoom with your name and organization displayed. The event will be recorded and shared with everyone who registered for the event. Please do share with your colleagues and your network. As part of the invitation, uh, the agenda is as follows. Firstly, there will be some open, opening remarks from Rabia Sultana, the chair of Start on Bangladesh, Joe Michel Grant, executive director, Action Against Hunger UK, Christina Bennett, the chief executive of Start Network, and Nick Harvey from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office in Bangladesh. Then we will be presenting the impact of locally driven humanitarian action through the Start on Bangladesh program. And finally, we will have 40 minutes of question and answer session before we close. We really hope you enjoy the event and we really look forward to engaging you in the discussion session. I will now pass on the floor to my colleague, Rabia Sultana. So Rabia Sultana is the chair of Start on Bangladesh. Thank you very much, Sajid, and very good morning for everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me properly. Uh, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, as Sajid said, my name is Rabia Sultana. I'm the country director for Muslim Aid UK in Bangladesh, and I'm the chair of Start Fund Bangladesh. And it's my immense pleasure that today I'm representing the 47 number organizations who make up Start Fund Bangladesh. As you will hear in more details during the presentation and as mentioned by Sajid, Start Fund Bangladesh is a civil society led rapid emergency response fund created in 2017 with support from UKA. Modeled on the Start Network successful Start wow. Fund, which, active, wow. which wow. activates wow. funding. Yeah. Sorry, which activates funding within 72 hours of a crisis alert. It fills a critical gap in humanitarian funding in Bangladesh. It is accessible to local, national, and international member non government organizations operating in Bangladesh to respond early to under the radar of emergency reaching communities in 13 days. Start from Bangladesh has purposefully grown from a membership of 20 international non-government and national organizations. In doing so, it has increased coordination and complementary among international and local organizations and ensures decisions around where when and how to respond to crises, which are relevant and accountable to affected communities. Moreover, the program in, is managed by a very small, brilliant and workaholic secretariat team. And it is hosted by Action Agonist Hunger. On behalf of the member, I would like to take the pleasure and take the opportunity to thank the Secretariat for all their hard work and dedication. Apart, I would also like to express uh, the growing gratitude to Action Agonist Hunger for their excellent rest, role of hosting and parenting as hosting agencies providing ongoing logistic support and mentoring to the Secretariat was awesome all through the tenure. Save the Children UK have supported the program by managing the contract with FCDO and have played a huge role supporting the program beyond compliance. From my personal experiences, not as a chair, but also as a 
member of the member organization, the impact of the program is faster and better quality response as responders are closer to the affected communities and the frontline aid workers are involved in the design of the response. Better coordination amongst actor and the knowledge shared amongst the member is shared with the wider coordination system. The COVID-19 response is the indivisible example of it before Bangladesh, before the humanitarian sector. We are incredibly grateful for the ongoing commitment of UK aid. For the next phase of the program, we share an ambition with FCDO to diversify the funding base and to create a true pool funding mechanism, which will enhance the impact and sustainability of the program and provide an examples of a national civil society led pool funding. As member, we are very excited about the future of Start Fund Bangladesh and growing the fund and diversing our future funders, growing the membership, increasing accountability to affected communities, more anticipatory actions and research will lead the Bangladesh humanitarian sector. We hope that today we'll get a flavor of what has been achieved so far and our plans for the future. We look forward to your patience hearing the presentations and your feedback. And thank you for your patience hearing to the welcome remarks. And I wish you all a very good day. Over to Sajid. Thank you, Rabia. Thank you very much. If anyone has any questions, please add them to the chat and we will have time to discuss them later. We will now pass over to Joan Michel, Executive Director, Action Against Hunger, UK. Joan Michel, your floor. Yes. Hiya. Hello, everybody. Uh, as Rabbi has mentioned, we, we have been Action Against Hunger hosting the, the Start from Bangladesh program since 2017. So that, that includes more concretely logistics, HR and security, the critical legal. Uh, elements such as the registration, the government approval of the program to receive international funding, and uh, as Rebea mentioned, uh, some uh, mentorship to the secretariat staff. So also it was very clear that as a host and also as a member of Start Network, Action Against Hunger Bangladesh did not and does not participate in Start from Bangladesh alerts or responses. So to ensure that there is no conflict of interest as host. Hosting Start from Bangladesh has been for us as Action Against Hunger an important commitment for our organization. We definitely we faced challenges over the, this last four years, but we learned a lot and adapted throughout this, uh, this period in close collaboration with uh, Sajid and, uh, and the team. There are two fundamental fundamentally two main reasons why Action Against Hunger has been and remains fully committed to the start from Bangladesh. The, the, the first one is in relation to localization. You all, as you all know, there are a lot of discussion on localization. And since their inceptions, Action Against Hunger has been a strong advocate for the local startups, as we strongly believe that only strong uh, concrete action are the most powerful drivers of the localization agenda. A bit less talks and more action in, in summary. And, and I think that the success of the start from Bangladesh has set a strong example that we need to, uh, to follow. The second reason why we are committed uh, to uh, the hubs and the start from the local start fund is it has been an opportunity for action against Sanger and hopefully for others to reflect on the evolving role of international NGOs. And this partnership between action against Sanger and start Bangladesh is demonstrating how both local and international NGOs can collaborate and complement each other towards common ambitions. And how we can bring each other's strengths and expertise to a full potential. And I think mean, that for me, that, that's really, we learned so much during this four year period. 
and it has inspired and influenced a lot of the internal action against Sangha thinking about the localization uh, built on experience with uh, the start from Bangladesh. So to conclude, I, I really would like to thank Sajid and the start Bangladesh team for really their commitment and the fantastic work that they, they are doing. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, John Michel, for your excellent speech. We will now pass over to Christina Bennett, Chief Executive of Start Network. And I'm remembering you again. If you have any questions or comments to Christina or for John Michel or any other speaker, please add them to the chat. And Christina, over to you now for opening remarks. Thanks very much, Sajid. Um, and thanks to everybody on the call today for joining us. Um, as the CEO of Start Network, I'm so encouraged and delighted that so many of you are here and representing such a diversity of voices and organizations, whether it's donors or um, NGOs, or you know, in fact, our members um, and members of Start from Bangladesh. Um, you know, we're all here to celebrate what really is a flagship program for us. And we're really immensely proud of what the program has delivered for us in the past four years. Um, and you'll hear more about this in the following presentations. But you know, as you've heard, there have been many sort of uh, many involved in this. And start from Bangladesh, and the success that it has it has achieved would not have been possible without the support of the Foreign Common Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office of the UK government, with action against hunger, as Jean Michel has just um, discussed, and also Save the Children um, UK, who have all been really instrumental to the success of the program. Um, and just to reiterate what other colleagues have said, that we're very, very grateful for all of your efforts. But also, I'd like to thank the in-country members, um, members of START from Bangladesh, members of START Network. Um, they have really been the energy and the engine behind START Fund Bangladesh and have really made it a vibrant emergency response fund with tremendous impact in Bangladesh. So before moving on to the main program, I wanted just to tell you a little bit more about START Network's vision, mission, and how START Fund Bangladesh very much emblemizes what we are trying to do on a wider scale. So as many of you may know, START Network is a membership organization of more than 55 members with reach across six continents. And our members include some very large NGOs, household names that many in the public would recognize, as well as some very, very small hyper-local members representing a church diocese, a collection of communities, for example. And this diversity is really by design because what we believe is as a membership, we encompass a variety of sizes, geographies, perspectives, and in representing that, we, we are the best of what the humanitarian system has to offer. Decades of experience, a complementarity of expertise, and an unrivaled footprint. So our vision is for a proactive, innovative, and locally driven humanitarian system in which people receive better quality humanitarian aid, are able to maintain their dignity, and are protected from suffering and harm. And our mission for achieving this is really by using our diverse membership to make systemic level shifts to tackle what we see are the sector's most fundamental problems. The first, that the current global humanitarian system is not accountable to people affected by crises. The second, that the prevailing model of humanitarian action is reactive, it's fragmented, and it's inefficient. And third, that our ways of working are inflexible, are outdated, and are really resistant to change because the incentive structures and the, 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 the business models within which we work are really out of step with today's world. So central to this, all, all of this is, is this concept of localization, pushing power and resources out from the center and taking humanitarian action closer to the places where crises happen and needs arise. But I have to say our version of localization is different from the localization described in the ground bargain, for example, that implies a power shift, a handing over of power from the power holders or us in the global north to the power seekers or those of you in the global south in a way that only reinforces the problematic power dynamic that we all are trying to reverse. So what we are looking to do instead at Start Network is something more transformational, where local actors themselves are the centers of power in our network and are the primary, primary determinants of how resources are invested and crises are addressed. 
So our whole vision is that we aim to move from where we are today, which is an emerging membership of organizations collaborating in different countries on programs and funds, to a fully distributed, self-organizing, self-actualizing network of networks with governance systems based on an equitable distribution of power. And all of this really underpinned by a family of funds, both locally managed funds such as Start from Bangladesh, but also access to global funds and global risk pools and supported by a global secretariat that creates a network effect for all of us, aggregating services, pooling risk and fostering learning and exchanges between members to enable all of us to amplify our impact. In short, our aim as Start Network is to catalyze a networked humanitarian system that is both locally positioned and globally connected. And that to me is why Start Fund, is, Start Fund Bangladesh has been so important to us because it delivers exactly on this point. As you'll hear in a few minutes, Start Fund Bangladesh has through its membership and under the leadership of Sajid and his team, become a driving force for localizing decision-making and ownership of humanitarian action in Bangladesh. And as such, Start from Bangladesh's impact is going beyond Bangladesh itself, gaining recognition for best practice among national and international members uh, and humanitarians alike, and particularly in, in the region where we're also getting some interest um, for replicating this model in places like Nepal and Myanmar. So to continue this important work in Bangladesh, we are seeking to engage traditional as well as non-traditional humanitarian funders who can support us with the right type of funding flexible funding, funding that's accessible to local and national organizations directly, that enables Start Fund Bangladesh to grow, flourish, and become a model for the future. So that's all for me, um, Sajid, back to your uh, ABLE chairmanship, thanks. Thank you, thank you, Christina. We will now pass over to Nick from the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, without whom this work would not be possible. Nick Harvey, the Humanitarian Advisor, FCD of Bangladesh. Nick, over to you. Great, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I very much welcome this meeting today. Uh, FCDO and Start Fund has traveled on a very interesting journey over the last uh, years. And I think we've, we've created a, together, I think a, a unique and a highly dynamic fund and network for supporting disaster response uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, and like others, I'd particularly like to thank uh, the Start Fund Secretariat, Sajid, Sochifor, and uh, the team for their dedication and efforts. I think last year really uh, exemplified the achievements that have been made with the compounding impacts of COVID. Start Fund provided a really effective and timely response to, to, to both Cyclone Amphan, but also the very severe monsoon flooding that was faced but it also responded to much smaller uh, and more extensive shocks, such as slum fires uh, and measles outbreaks. I don't think there's any awards, uh, global awards for pooled funds, but I would like to offer two examples, which I think illustrate the recognition that Start Fund Bangladesh deserves. And the first, and I think this was alluded to by, by Christina, was that I mean, we've been approached by a number of um, our own FCDO offices uh, in other countries who are eager to understand how Start Fund operates uh, with a potential and interest to try and emulate it in, the, the, in their own countries. Um, and the second is a review that was undertaken last year on the ba Grand Bargain Workstream on localization, in which Start Fund Bangladesh was very highly commended. Um, for the meeting today, I'd like to focus on, on five issues, uh, and I want to frame those uh, by five words. And the first is dull, um, and I hope some of you at least have seen or read the works of Stefan Durkon and, and Daniel Clark's um, extremely good book on called Dull Disasters, and the need to generate a rules-based system in order to have effective um, disaster response. And there's sort of... Uh, I think Start Fund captures some of those, those core elements, which is the need for pre-agreed money, uh, a pre-agreed network of agencies, which exist across the country, and clear roles and responsibilities, and a system that functions uh, very fast and very quickly when triggered. And I think those are key, key ingredients for success. The second is, is local. Uh, and, and as we've already heard, this is obviously a core part of 
um, uh, start from Bangladesh and its ethos. And I think the fact that 70% of the funds are going to local NGOs speaks volumes. It's also very good value for money. But I think one of the, the, key, the key important issues here is that this whole ethos of the start fund being owned by its members and making collective decisions. And I'm sure we'll hear more on this today. The, the, the third issue is connected. And I think Start Fund Bangladesh has, has gained the respect and is very well linked into the humanitarian coordination system in Bangladesh, including the needs assessment working group. And I think that has helped mutually reinforce um, both the coordination system and Start Fund Bangladesh itself. And I think it provides a very good um, uh, platform and lo for, for local voice uh, in policy and coordination. The fourth point is dynamic. And I think yes, uh, Start Fund is certainly very innovative and, and, and continues to experiment, such as the work on anticipatory action. Uh, and obviously that is an area that needs to be maintained. And we're starting to explore issues of whether there needs to, to slightly expand the duration of a response um, uh, in certain instances and how to accompany people uh, for a slightly longer period of time. And then this, is perhaps particularly important as we as the duration of time between crises is getting ever shorter as a result of climate change. And then the fifth and the last point uh, is the issue of diversity. And, 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 and here I'm particularly focusing on, on funds. And I think this is perhaps, it is a, a weaker uh, um, a spot within a start fund at the moment in the sense that it's, it, at the moment it is solely uh, funded by the UK. So I think now that we've proved the concept, it's important to make this a genuinely pooled fund. It's not just a matter of support from other institutional donors, which would certainly be very welcome, but it's also important to diversify and look at other funding opportunities, such as the private sector foundations and crowdfunding, so that there is a stable funding uh, base. Uh, and uh, in which then Start Fund can continue to flourish uh, in the future. I look forward to the discussion today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Nick. I see there are some comments in the chat. Please continue to add them and we will come back to them shortly. Uh, I will now welcome uh, Farzana Alam and Jahin Shakur uh, from uh, Uttaram. Uh, and Farzana is working as a male coordinator for Start Fund Bangladesh. So I welcome you all to the main presentation of Start from Bangladesh. Farzana, over to you. Um, thank you, Sajid Bhai, and uh, good afternoon and welcome all. As Sajid Bhai said, I am Farzana Hamid. I'm working with Start Fund Bangladesh Secretariat, and I will be taking you through a part of Start Fund Bangladesh's story. And we are so grateful to have you and share with you in celebrating our four-year journey towards localization in the hopes that all endings are actually disguised as new beginnings. So uh, starting with the presentation, um, if we move on to slide one, Ter. So um, as many people have already introduced Start Fund Bangladesh, and I know many of you have already Google Start Fund Bangladesh. So who are we? We are, as many people described, we are a civil society owned and led rapid emergency fund that activates within 72 hours of a crisis. What we are trying to do is attempt to address a very crucial gap in humanitarian funding by addressing small to medium under the radar emergencies. And we are trying to enable direct access to local, national, and international NGOs. As already mentioned, uh, our model is modeled on the experience of Start Network's successful Start Fund. Again, to reiterate what people have said, it was created in 2017 with the support from UK Aid. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. So what inspired the creation of this model and what problems does this model attempt to address? Many of this have been alluded to by Christina, but going more into detail about Bangladesh's context. As many of you know, Bangladesh is one of the most disaster prone countries in the world, mainly due to its high population density, low lying topography and geographical location as a tropical basin. In fact, in the last 30 years alone, Bangladesh has been impacted by over 200 national disasters. The situation is made worse by the Rohingya refugee influx and the human and uh, uh, increased rise of urban disasters. 
And even though 95% of the humanitarian aid that is flowing into Bangladesh is in response to natural hazards, this funding is uh, very reactive and dependent on media headlines and political will. As such, majority of the funding is channeled to large-scale disasters, leaving a huge gap in funding for small to medium-scale disasters that always remain or often remain underfunded and under the radar. In addition, power remains very much centralized, with decisions being made very far from where the crisis is occurring. So funding remains inaccessible to local and national actors who are the frontliners in the humanitarian crisis. And that's what happens is interventions are not sustainable, locally driven and contextualized, leaving community needs unmet. This also has a limiting impact on innovations. Furthermore, there's a multiplicity of actors and limited resources and leading to competition, which undermines coordination effort. In addition to this, the presence of complex system of intermediaries before the funding reaches to implementing agencies results in very many delays. As such, Start Fund Bangladesh wants to transform this humanitarian system from a reactive risk averse and centralized system to, as Christina mentioned, a more proactive, innovative and locally owned force. If we move on to the next slide. So the next slide um, are what would guide Start Fund Bangladesh in achieving what we are trying to achieve and how we are trying to solve the problems. So the first is, uh, objective, as you can see, is to establish a nationally, national civil society owned fund, which is evidence-based trans with transparent and neutral decision-making. The second objective is to design and facilitate a financing mechanism to allow local, national and international NGOs to directly access rapid and anticipatory funding. The third is to demonstrate the value and complement existing humanitarian preparedness and response to promote greater collaboration. Moving on to the next slide. So since its inception, the Start Fund Bangladesh has grown from a membership of 20 international agencies to include 27 local and national organizations. Uh, the diagram shows all the logos of all our 47 members. Uh, so right now, local and national NGOs can directly access the fund as well as lead consortiums. Start Fund Bangladesh was, in fact, one of the first emergency funds that enabled local and national NGOs to access international aid directly. In terms of our legal placement, as has already been mentioned, Save the Children holds the contract with FCDO as our grant custodian, and Action Against Hunger hosts the Start Fund Bangladesh Secretariat team. In a recent perception survey, 92% of our members said that one of the greatest values of Start Fund Bangladesh was in bringing about systemic change in the humanitarian architecture. Moving on to slide five. Uh, Claire, if you move on to the next slide. Moving on to our governance mechanism. So one of our main objective was creating a civil society owned fund with a transparent and accountable governance mechanism. And this is the governance structure that we use in Start Fund Bangladesh. The governance structure ensures that the participation of all 47 members in the decision making process. As you can see, there are three main committees within the structure, the general committee, the executive committee and the project selection committee. Now the highest decision making committee is the general committee, which consists of selected senior representatives from all of the 47 member NGOs. Now, the general committee elects the 13 member executive committee that operates as a country level steering committee. Now, the executive committee delegated, delegates the responsibility of project selection to project selection committee. And this separation of responsibility has created transparency in decision making process and has also created greater accountability. Now, as you see, the Secretariat is completely at the bottom. The Secretariat is not a decision making body. It only works as a facilitator to ensure that the model delivers on its purpose. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Now, as you can see, this is the alert cycle of Start Fund Bangladesh. Now, a Start Fund Bangladesh responds to crisis through an alert cycle, which is shown right now. 
So a set of processes actually guides the alert cycle from when a crisis is identified to when an alert is raised, fund activated, proposal submitted, project selected, implemented, and reported on. Each project has a timeline of 45 days, except in exceptional circumstances. Now, the Start Fund Handbook sets out the operational processes and governance mechanism of this alert cycle, and it involves the governance structure previously described in the slide. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I think the slide is already here. So uh, in terms of the impact of Start Fund Bangladesh or where we have reached over the four years of our existence, to date Start Fund Bangladesh has activate, activated 29 emergency response alerts, three anticipatory alerts, and awarded 73 projects breaching over 750,000 people directly by allocating 6.85 million GB GBP. Uh, so that was the overall four year journey and our impact in terms of numbers. Now let's move on to the next slide where we show you a map, a snapshot of where our interventions have been to date. So the map is basically a snapshot of where Start Fund Bangladesh has responded to date with respective reach. So as the map shows, we have been able to reach the most crisis affected areas in Bangladesh. And additionally, since we have members across all the 64 di districts of Bangladesh, we are able to reach the last mile most vulnerable populations. In addition, our members commitment to deliver immediate and last mile support to affected communities in coordination with local government strengthens and encourages trust and positive engagement with NGOs local government representatives and affected communities. Now, this national presence of members using this approach has built our reputation as an effective and reliable fund. Moving on to the next slide. Now, the infographic that you can all see attempts to provide a snapshot of how we have progressed against the objectives that we set out to. In terms of rapidness, before Start Fund Bangladesh, the number of days taken to reach communities once an alert was there was 20 days. This has been reduced to 13 days. Secondly, uh, in 2020, we witnessed 85% of our funding going directly to local and national members, surpassing the grand bargain target of 25% by very far. Finally, because funding is going directly to local organizations rather than passing through intermediaries, we see very many value additions and value for money, one of them being that the average operation and management cost per alert has reduced from as high as 30.5% when the membership was solely international to as low as 11.2% now that the fund has a greater local membership. Moving on to the next slide. Now, the COVID-19 crisis gave us an opportunity to understand the impact of our localization efforts. As you all know, the global COVID-19 was a global crisis and seemingly beyond the scope of Start Fund Bangladesh as it is the large scale disasters. But members felt that the importance of rapid localized responses and started responding using their own resources. And Start Fund Bangladesh became one of the earliest responders to COVID-19 situation in Bangladesh. Between uh, 27th and 30th March, uh, it activated three alerts and awarded GBP 550,000 to 11 Latin local and national NGOs, reaching an estimated of 4.7 million people in 22 districts with cash, wash, equipment, and awareness activities. A salient feature to inform the response modalities was that the COVID-19 standard operating procedures for members. This was developed by Start Fund Bangladesh to ensure safety for staff, volunteers, and project participants. It helped members to gain permission from local government authorities to operate amid lockdown restrictions and to raise more funds from other donors and development partners. Start Fund Bangladesh also ensured additional budget allocations to operationalize the, start, uh, the SOP, which included accommodation and transportation facilities. So COVID-19 was also a new experience for communities and local organizations who tested response measures and different innovations. Our fund's flexibility for adaptation and contextualization, according to the specific needs of each locality, created rooms for various innovations 
which included the COVID-19 resilient villages in Chathkira and the market value chain establishment in Barguna, which continued to be existence after the intervention period. Uh, we shall now be showing you um, a short video. And I will hand over to uh, Jahid. Thank you. I'm going to go to the total is Hilona. It has Shampuno Utulunala de Che. The Amade Jacoto, Dorona Rufugaroise, the Batsade, Jato Director Shu Babstoise. Amade Rifashe on a Baritiakona Lona Fanijana. A Griscote, a Honta, a person of Honor Jati Vetise. Even Amade can a main actor had a suit of the Vaza. Amade Pasgasi, Bakurigam takes our Tayasta. Even the Akonos, Amade Lugzon, the Dukana Bazar, Had Bazar, Malamale, I can take in Yazati Vetise. Yes, Sizu, Sidney, and Sizu, Norea, Dolis, Tigmozim, Hana, then I did the very room. আমারি এনে কেন সবই দেও এ দিয়া আমার এই ঝাড়ার ফারে কারিতাস থেকে 6500 টাকা বই খুব উপকারে সান মাইটা ফুতি বন্ধি আমি সেই মাইটা ডাক্তার দেখে পেতিলাম না তো ডাক্তার দেখে পাতিছি সংসারে কিছু ব্যয় করতেছে স্টার্টমেন্ট বাংলাদেশে টাকা দিছিল তার থেকে আমি চাল কিনেছি আর সেলাই মেশিনে সুতোর তো সিটেট কিনেছি আর ছেলেমেদের অসুখবসেগুলো ওষুধপত্র কিনেছি করোনাকে কেন্দ্র করে যে বিষয়গুলো যেমন মাস্ক Hand sanitizer, shaban, egulo, diesen, ejono, amade, goribuki manus on a cup of crypto. Toto, all Kushuma and Moditara, who gives to Manushito no response for it. It all no organization for an Ashapashi, Eastern Bangladesh, a local organization with capacity building in Kaskutse, a Kepre ICR J in Takata Ruse, a local organization with capacity with the Epigroup to Puno Bunga Palon for it. Car Orishma Dakaja, local organization, each other shot theo, the Easter. Start for the show you with the SDS, the Formosini Ashe, Akmashi Mikoreta, Oton Doshundor Babe, Amade Ekane, Bachai Pukri, Shomadan Kore, among Ekor Mushit, Nogoshata, Tin Hajataka, Hygiene Package, among the Bibinodan and Beach, Shoraha Kore Prime, Sare Tin Hajar Manuske, Sajokora. যে আমরা পাচ্ছি সে কারণে কিন্তু আইসিআরটা আমরা পাই আমাদের সংগঠন কিন্তু এই ডিজিস্টারে কাজ করার জন্য স্টাফদের তৈরি করা বলে ইদোনে ইকুইপমেন্ট কেটা বলে এই জায়গাটা কিন্তু আমরা আসলে তৈরি হচ্ছে দ্রুত বন্যা আসছে এবং যত দ্রুত স্টেট ফান্ডের অধ্যায়নে এসডিএস ও রেসপন্স গেছে এটা একটা স্মরণীয় ঘটনা বিশেষ করে উপজেলা পরিষদ আমাদের বিষয়টা কি অনেক অ্যাপ্রিশিয়েট করছে যেখানে ম্যাপ টুল এন্ড কম্পোনেন্ট রেসপন্স মেকানিজম পদ্ধতির মাধ্যমে আমরা যে ফিডব্যাকটা কমিউনিটি ফিডব্যাকটা গ্রহণ করে থাকি এই ফিডব্যাকের মাধ্যমে আমরা যখন রেসপন্সটা করি সেই রেসপন্সের মাধ্যমে মূলত আমাদের কাজের জবাবদিহিতা এবং স্বচ্ছতা দুইটাই আমরা নিশ্চিত করতে পারি Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. I am Jahin Sham Shakur and I work in a local NGO named Uttaran in Bangladesh and also a member of the Project Selection Committee of Start Fund Bangladesh. As you have seen in the video, the Start Fund Bangladesh is more than just an emergency response funding mechanism. It also contributes additional value to the localization agenda in Bangladesh, including ICA sharing. We are encouraging change in partnership behavior. Start Fund Bangladesh supported local NGOs and national NGOs to claim their fair share of management and ICR costs. For example, recently three members of INGOs negotiated with their head offices to share equal ICR costs with the local partners. As local and national NGOs are able to charge and retain the ICR, they have now funds available to invest in organizational strengthening. Start Fund Bangladesh piloted the organizational system strengthening initiative to support this, which enabled member NGOs to identify and improve their critical capacity building needs. Start Fund Bangladesh has worked to build the capacity of communities, local and national actors, to anticipate disasters before they happen, access disaster risk financing, and scale up community-led approaches to preparedness and response. Informed by the knowledge and expertise of Start Network's crisis anticipation and risk financing team, Start Fund Bangladesh launched a national forum platform. 
the platform support members and communities to anticipate crisis and initiate action before disaster hits and strengthen their re resilience and ability to recover. Start Plan Bangladesh piloted an extended humanitarian assistance window for ongoing disasters that needs transition to recovery beyond our regular 45-day response timeline. This has enabled Start Plan Bangladesh to continue to support communities with unmet needs during a long extending disaster crisis. Finally, Start Plan Bangladesh has developed an online data repository to improve access to key pre-crisis data and hazard-specific indicators for Bangladesh in a user-friendly, geo-referenced manner, usable and accessible to all members. Moving on to the next slide. In addition, Start Fund Bangladesh has played a critical role in influencing national humanitarian practices in coordination with other humanitarian actors. For example, advocating for a national urban cash package in partnership with Cash Working Group, or supporting the need assessment working group in developing urban disaster joint need assessment tool. This tool was presented to the Department of Disaster Management in Bangladesh and now provides a common template to assess post-disaster situations and immediate needs in urban areas after a disaster across the country. In September 2020, Tartan Bangladesh was appointed to lead the localization technical working group. Now, this group was established by the UN Resident Coordinator's Office and, in, and is coordinated by the Ministry of Disaster Management and Relief in Bangladesh. It aims to gather data on, evi on evidence of progress on localization to support local community and national actors to maintain close collaboration with wider humanitarian community and advocate for strengthening localization actions for, of international actors and donors. Finally, Start Fund Bangladesh sought to broaden the understanding of and commitment to common principles of accountability across the agencies in Bangladesh through the development of 16 me mechanism of, a, of accountability for affected community tools that we previously mentioned. The collective ownership of accountability tool has led to its adoption in Bangladesh's humanitarian coordination system through the localization technical working group as an implementation requirement for all humanitarian agencies to respond to disasters. Uh, moving on to the next slide, Start Fund Bangladesh is also influencing the global humanitarian practices through informing the grand bargain, grand bargain signatories of how pooled funds can better support localization outcomes committed within the grand bargain. A desk review was carried out in September 2020 on behalf of the Grand Bargain Localization Work Stream. On the slides, there are some views that were shared by the Start Fund members during the study. I can just type, uh, I can see it on the slides. I can quickly read out a couple of quotes for you. Uh, I just go to the third quote that encouraged international agencies, international NGOs, country offices to make the case to the headquarters that they should not deduct overhead costs for funds raised at a country level. Similarly, another member quoted that Start Fund Bangladesh is different. It is providing, it has provided a funding so we can implement properly, uh, properly in our disaster prone area. It has also provided overhead costs and capacity strengthening support to make us sustainable. The study highlighted that Start Fund Bangladesh has the best practice of using pooled fund to support the localization efforts. Now I invite Sajid Bhai to finish the presentation for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jain. So Jain was one of the champion, uh, localization champion from the Start Fund Bangladesh in Bangladesh. Uh, so, I mean, building on our success as the first phase of the program draws uh, to a close on the 31st of March this year, Start Fund Bangladesh has developed its new business case for the next four years and uh, consolidating the success and learning on the first phase and building in some key new elements to the fund. The proposed new business case is for a 16 million GBP program, directly supporting at least 1.2 million people at risk of affected uh, by crisis through managing a pool fund for anticipation. And uh, sorry. Uh, and rapid response, provide further extended humanitarian assistance funding uh, introducing an innovation window around early action and disaster risk financing, continue to build on its reputation and influence in local and national coordination mechanisms, strengthening civil society space in decision making and the humanitarian ecosystem. Its role as co-convener of the localization working group is in Bangladesh is very, very critical here. A commitment to grow and diversify its membership to include research institutions, 
private sector organizations, as well as further local and national civil society organizations. So with that, uh, we conclude our uh, presentation. Now I will be uh, uh, thanking again Farzana and Zahim for their nice and concise presentations and opening the floor for uh, uh, question and answer sessions. We have around 40 minutes for the Q&A session. We kindly ask you to write or post your questions in the chat and we will then unmute you so that you can ask your questions. Uh, there I are have, questions in the in the chat box. There are few yeah, questions in the chat box. I am yeah. Thank you, Rabia. So I am reading from those uh, questions in the chat box, and I will be also requesting others. Uh, so Rabia, Christina, Nick, uh, Shokul, Helen, Ira, and Claire, uh, I will be requesting you for some of the uh, answers to those uh, questions. Um, so the Sajid, first question. Oh, Sajid, sorry, I have collected them. I'll copy them here to make them easy, easy for you. Okay, thank you. So the first question was uh, made by Drake, our friends. Uh, so it's a question around the selection criteria for the membership agencies. And uh, what I can say that uh, we have gone through a very extensive one year long uh, due diligence uh, processes to select the local organizations. And uh, the due diligence uh, criteria were kind of divided in six different pillars. So it was governance, systems and processes, financial management, human resource, control environments, and the humanitarian program capacity. We had initially 396 uh, applications from all over Bangladesh. And from there, gradually, we have uh, done the due diligence in three different steps. And finally, we came out with the 26 local and national organization. Uh, and then uh, there was one uh, comment on the, on the fire incidents that's now currently going on in the Rohingya camp. Uh, so I would like to mention here that uh, there is currently a stop gap uh, funding gap scenario, which is why the local national organizations uh, in start from Bangladesh, they cannot uh, alert, raise an alert directly now, but the international organizations who are a member of the global start network, they can raise an alert uh, to the global uh, funding pot and then they can have a direct access there. Uh, and what I have also communicated with different member agencies, they have already started working there. So ACF, uh, Help Age Internationals, they are already uh, working in those areas. Uh, from Fiona Mekshe, in terms of the, the weather, uh, I think it's a big question. So it's about the civil society network, how much is uh, enough? I think so. I will let Fiona to question, uh, to, to raise her questions. And I will be then uh, asking uh, also, I mean, Christina to have that answer. So Fiona. Okay, so I think Fiona is not there. So does Start Fund Bangladesh have a target number of local agencies that they would consider a success in terms of the civil society network within Bangladesh? And following on from that, does the team have an idea of funding level that will be required to service that number of agencies? Uh, to tell frankly, no, we do not yet have a kind of ideal number, how much it should be. But if I understand, I mean, from the national perspective that there are uh, quite a good number of uh, local national organizations working in different areas. And we are also thinking of diversifying our membership base in terms of, I mean, going more local and going more to the root areas. There are also certain kind of realities in terms of thinking about the due diligences and compliances requirements to access donor funding. Uh, so, I mean, we will be uh, definitely onboarding NGOs uh, at different uh, time of our journey. And as you know, Start Network is currently have a 
entire due diligence framework, which also provides opportunity for organizations uh, to be engaged with the start network as a, as a member in terms of their capacity. And then there is also a capacity building roadmap work so that the organizations can go from tier four to tier one. Uh, Christina, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, thanks, Ajit. Maybe just briefly, um, just to give a more global perspective to what you've said, which I is completely um, in line with what I'm about to say. Um, you know, as a as a global network, we are aiming to have our country based hubs and national funds like Start from Bangladesh to be um, at least 50% made up of local members and local organizations. So um, less important for me is the number of organizations involved in, in these initiatives. More important for me is the diversity of those organizations um, and it for, it to be, for it to be locally driven and locally led. So at a global level, we are asking that all of our country-based work be more than 50% local. Um, but then we do want to have um, a critical mass of organizations to be able to model a different way of working. So what, in terms of numbers, what we're aiming for is really a membership that replicates what the humanitarian ecosystem looks like in that country. And what that looks like is up to the different country, um, you know, national fund or, or hub to determine for itself. But then to really demonstrate through sort of a critical mass of membership that we can model a different way of working. So it's about a diversity of membership based on the needs of that particular office or hub or fund. And then it's just determining what, you know, what a critical mass of those organizations look like to be able to operate as a, as a working fund and to demonstrate that others that a different way of working is possible. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Krishna. Uh, there is another question, I think, which is a question that we hear most of the time, and we yet do not have a very concrete answer to that because it's kind of political. So it's from John Edward. Uh, so the question is uh, how we define local NGO in, in, in this context. Uh, I will again pass it over to Christina. Uh, and yeah, Christina, please. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll say a word about um, how we sort of think about local, but I don't know, Sajid, I don't know if you and your colleagues want to sort of talk a little bit about how you determine local in the context of Bangladesh, because they do think it is very context specific. So, you know, this question about who is a local organization and who is an international organization and who is a national organization has always been discussed in terms of really, in terms of binaries, you're either local or you're international, whereas in reality, our organizations represent a real spectrum of local, you know, national, international, whether it's because of footprint or, or fundraising capacity or brand aware, brand name. I mean, you know, I think all within all of our organizations and country offices, there are different degrees of what of, of local. So what we're trying to do at global level is we've established something called diversity criteria, which really does put degree of localness on a spectrum rather than define it in terms of you are, you aren't. Um, and that spectrum includes attributes like, you know, where is your, what is your country of origin? You know, how was, how, who, where is your board located? Where's your governance located? You know, do you, are you attached to a national uh, or an international brand? Are you attached to a local national or international fundraising capacity? And answering all of these questions, you would get a picture of what whether a local an organization has attributes of being more locally positioned and attributes of being more globally positioned. And I think it's for each country office, or for, sorry, for each hub or for each national fund, it's to determine for yourselves what that diversity picture should look like in your context. So. In one context, you may have very, very strong civil society groups, very strong local actors, in which case um, you would want to have more of those of those organizations in your network. In other places, there are, you know, civil society space is very, very restricted. And so you would want more of an international presence in your hub. So it really is up to the individual in-country presence to be able to determine what that diversity looks like in their context. Sajid, I don't know how you did this in the context of Start from Bangladesh and what sort of criteria you used or what diversity indexes you used, but I wonder if it would be helpful to talk a little bit about that. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you, Krishna. Because, yeah, uh, I know that I have to answer that question. So, but coming from the global perspective, so I think one point is very, very uh, crucial to understand here that whether we will be starting the discussions in terms of dividing who is local and who is uh, international. So I think that's a kind of a very uh, uncomfortable situation at times. But in Bangladesh, if you say how we define it, so it's about you know the organizations that has a headquarter in other country, we define them uh, as an uh, international organizations. The organizations who doesn't have a headquarter in outside Bangladesh, they are not uh, regarded as international. And there are also issues around, we say that, okay, there are federated entity, and also we say there are confederated entity. There are also debates around whether the confederated entity will be national uh, or international, but these debates are not yet uh, uh, solved. But what we can say the 26 organizations who we onboarded in start from Bangladesh as members, they are all local, they do not have any headquarters outside Bangladesh. And they have originated from the soul of uh, Bangladesh, and then they are also now working in different parts of, of Bangladesh. Some of the organizations are as small as working in only one or two districts of, of Bangladesh. I think so that answered some of the questions. Uh, so the next question, I think, is, uh, I mean, these are, so Lisa, uh, from Diaconia, uh, would you like to make a question, Lisa? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Hi, thanks very much. Uh, so my question was related to quality funding, so to speak. Uh, I think it's great that um, local and national organizations can apply directly to funding through the START Fund, but I'm aware this is quite usually quite short-term projects. So uh, as a big part of successful localization is also allowing local and national actors to sustainably build their capacities over time, how does the START Fund Bangladesh link into more longer-term initiatives on capacity strengthening? Uh, thank you, Lisa. And I think it's also very really aligned with the question from John Edwards. So the question from John was, is any organizational development support provided to help enable more local agencies to access disaster financing directly? So, uh, I mean, as you know that it's uh, when we talk about start funds, suddenly and immediately it comes to our mind that, okay, it's a 45 day response and then organizations are doing the response and then finishing it within 45 days. So the 26 organizations who we onboarded with the start fund. So uh, there is an ongoing capacity building initiatives that run parallelly with the emergency response interventions. Uh, so what we are currently doing, we call it organizational system strengthening initiatives. We are facilitating a co-creation of organizational uh, development roadmap where the local organizations, they are having uh, workshops, uh, consultations at their offices involving staffs from different levels of the offices. And then they come together, facilitated by an uh, external consultant. They discuss among themselves. And then they decide what areas are the gaps and where they want to really strengthen their, their capacity. And out of those uh, roadmaps, then uh, start from Bangladesh, we try to kind of you know, select those areas where we will be able to support. We also inspire the organizations to kind of use that uh, organizational development planning to inform other development partners to raise funds for their organizational development. Uh, so currently we have seen that there are three or four uh, examples where uh, the organizations use that uh, plan and uh, were successful to raise funds. From the start fund, we are also capacitating the organizations in terms of financial management, in terms of the HR uh, management, and also in terms of the uh, other uh, organizational issues like IT infrastructure, et cetera. Uh, what we have seen that these are contributing the organizations to go for kind of, you know, raising more funds, 
there are organizations, the local organizations who are leading consortium. And we have seen that some of the INGOs were part of the consortium. And that is also giving confidence to the local organizations and gaining their experiences and using that experiences to raise more funds. And there are uh, good examples coming out uh, nowadays. Uh, the the ICR sharing we were talking about, we are also trying to link ICR sharing with the organizational development because now local organizations are more and more accessing the fund directly, which means that they are getting the full share of the ICR and they are also investing the ICR money in their organizational development. So it's a kind of uh, multi prong approach where, where the organizations are gaining confidence from the from the experiences uh, of uh, implementing star funder response but at the same time using the experiences and using the resources to invest more in their organizational development i think fiona is back so fiona would you would you like to uh, ask your your questions because i think you have uh, several other questions also in the chat box fiona yeah thanks can you hear me now I hear you. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I'm just interested in terms of the sort of strategic direction. So you, there's a business case into FCDO, which is brilliant for four years, and hopefully that will be approved. But I just wondered if, if there's a, a more coherent plan outside of that particular business case that helps people understand the trajectory of the Start Fund Bangladesh in terms of number of agencies. And I get Christina's point, it's about the split as, as much as the number. But if you only have, if you stay at 30 agencies, you know, and have 15 local and 15 not, is that good enough? Or, or what's the, the, the plan? You know, do you want 100 agencies, 50 50, or do you want? And in relation to that, um, around the funding, one is, you know, if you grow, then what's the funding limit? But more importantly, I think, is there a way to use some of the international members of the START network to leverage funding on behalf of START Fund Bangladesh as part of those members' localization kind of agenda plans? I don't know the answer for, for Save the Children, for instance, um, but, but I do wonder whether there's not more that can be done across the membership to leverage funding in, in response to some of the, the plans for more localized funding. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Fiona. I mean, I don't have a direct answer to that, but I think yeah, the answer were also kind of, you know, very much hiding in the questions you made. So I think it's because, you know, the, the uniqueness, the beauty of Star Network is that it's, an, a network of NGOs and INGOs, which means that the organizations who are working in different layers of the humanitarian architectures. And it's very, very, uh, it's a beauty to understand how these different entity complement and converge their capacity and, and how, we, how we make it better. In terms of the uh, resource mobilization, Start Network always feel that the INGO member agencies also has a very big role and, uh, and can be a catalyst in terms of, you know, in influencing donors and in terms of, you know, recognizing the funding mechanism and also in terms of supporting the network in, in raising more funds in the new future. Um, so, I mean, and I think it's, I think the, 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 the challenge maybe that we are facing currently is that when we talk about localization, uh, there are kind of different definitions also from the different positions. So, so the positions also define some of the localization aspect from, from the different organizational perspective. But I think the, the importance that we, we need to consider here is that, I mean, because localization has several dimensions, so whether uh, the different organizations understand their part in terms of localization. So I really, I mean, welcome uh, Fiona's kind of uh, the, the concern. And I'm sure that there are people also in, in, in this particular uh, event who, who has some of the other reflections. 
Would anyone like to answer that, Ira or uh, Christina or even Nick? Um, well, I mean, I could answer. I know that I've seen that there are several questions um, around um, diversifying funding in Bangladesh um, and, and what are we doing around that. I've seen multiple questions. So maybe I can just answer yes. We are absolutely looking um, to diversify and make this into a true pool of funds. And that is a priority for us over the next uh, years. How we see us doing this is, first of all, you know, using our um, our contacts within the donors that we have for the Global Start Fund. So we have already reached out to them and see how they could be supporting us um, with this um, local program. Um, apart from that, they have been helping us to connect with other bilateral donors um, and multilaterals where appropriate to see how we can start engaging and building those relationships with, with donors. Apart from that, very recently, we started to research and prospect and get in touch with more of um network of donors who are very interested in localization um, and system change and um, for example the center for disaster philanthropy they have a network of donors who are interested in localization so we've been actually pitching um start from Bangladesh to them and waiting to hear um questions or or if they're interested in this program and beyond that in 2019 we've done a, a study with the private sector in Bangladesh to understand what is their interest in humanitarian aid and would they be interested in funding a program like this with COVID. Some of the work that had been done um, around that stopped and we've just picked it up um, and invited some of those representatives from corporates to join this event. Also, we will be following up from this meeting. And I think we're also looking currently at the value, you know, at the value proposition for potential donors. Um, either bilaterals, but also um, corporates and trusts and foundations around, you know, giving a bit of flexibility um, around ear, soft earmarking in Start from Bangladesh. In the past, we were very conscious that all the, the money that goes into our pool funds is very much completely unrestricted and flexible around either countries or regions um, or the type of um, risks um, hazards that they would be covering, but we're conscious that we might have to be a little bit flexible and understand that some funders might be more interested in specific types of, you know, climate change related risks or regions within a country in Bangladesh. So that's something that we're going to be looking at and discussing with potential donors um, to increase that interest and also make it easier for donors um, to give to start from Bangladesh. So we're absolutely looking to diversify the funding and that is one of our number one priorities you know outside of the delivery of the program it is around diversifying funding uh thank you thank you ira uh, so there is a question from esan roman from dhaka cinema mission uh esan bhai would you like to uh make your questions and i will then hand over to christina to answer that esan bhai okay uh Thank you, Sajid Bhai. Uh, I'm Ehsan. Uh, I'm also representing NAHAP uh, as a platform of the local NGOs uh, in Bangladesh uh, promoting localization. So from that perspective, yeah, we have been uh, associated with the Start Fund Bangladesh and we found that that's a very good example that could create a good example uh, of mobilizing the local organizations as well as uh, increasing their access and in the global pool, uh, pool fund study that came also from Nahab, uh, we also made a study about the potentiality of pool funds in Bangladesh and we took a start fund as a case as well. Uh, the issue that comes in our discussion, that's why I raised this, uh, start fund Bangladesh uh, in its new business case also it would be in a project mode, I understand. Uh, so there can be accessing fund, increasing the uh, participation, enhancing capacity, those things could be more uh, definitely useful. But I'm talking more about my question is about the governance of the Start Fund Bangladesh. At present, we are the member local organizations as well as IUGUs are collectively managing the fund. But this is governance goes much beyond that. that since Start Fund Bangladesh is part of Start Network Global, and start network in its global planning uh, are 
uh, talking about the developing hub as well as connecting with the local uh, country level uh, networks uh, platforms. So what really the start network at the global level or glo from global perspective, they see the governance, future governance of this sort of platforms at the country level where it is definitely diverse because of the country context. And for Bangladesh Start Fund, Bangladesh, we are also looking towards that what really comes from the start network from the global level. Over. Thanks very much for your question. It's a really, really interesting one. And it, is a, it lies at the very heart of what we're trying to do at Start Network at the global level um, these days. So thanks for that. You know, when in my opening remarks, I talked a little bit about what our vision is for the future of the network. Um, and the way I would describe it is if right now we look like a wheel, whereas we have a center, which is sort of our, our headquarters, which is based in the UK. And then we have our sort of the spokes leading out to the edges of the wheel. And those um, for the moment are things like Start from Bangladesh and our country and regional hubs. Where we want to move to is a kind of a wheel structure to something that looks much more like a web. So a fully distributed network of networks where you have connections um, of, of uh, between um, hubs of e with equal power um, that interact with each other um, on a networked basis. So, you know, the growth of Start Network is not going to be in growing, you know, being ever an ever larger headquarters, but it's growing the network. So more and more country based regional hubs, funds, things like that. And the success of the network doesn't depend on how big even those grow, but the strength of the, the connections between them. So what we really want to do is, is you know, is advocate for um, a, a style of network where there is peer learning, peer communication, pooled risk, pooled resources, where they all aspects of the network share power, share decision making, and are able to access the services that our collective, um, the services and the expertise that our collective provides. Now, in terms of governance, that will also require a shift in the way that we're governed. We're now governed in a much more traditional way where we have a board that, you know, supports the Secretariat in London, etc. Um, what we want to move to is a, a much more dispersed governance structure where, for example, hubs not only sit on the global board, but they form assemblies of members in their own right um, in a decentralized way. We, we've started that, um, we have a design for it, and we started moving to that with um, hub, represent hub representation on our board. But you know, we have a long way to go in transitioning from where we are today to where we would like to be in the future, and you know, that's several years away. Um, importantly for that is the role of, of, of funds like Start Fund Bangladesh, of our hubs, and how you know you help to grow that network. Um, and that's about taking on more and more members and local members um, through the hubs, through the through the funds, um, so that they be, can become part of this network of networks. Um, it's also trying to figure out, and you know, you, in your question was was something about how um, existing members, how INGOs interact in these various hubs um, and take on a, um, a different role. And um, Joe Michel also alluded to this in the beginning. You know, the transition from this kind of more traditional aid organization to this network of networks also requires that, you know, in Start from Bangladesh, in our hubs, we have to have conversations among international, national and local members to decide what is the right mix of, of membership, what is the role of all of these different actors, what is their ability to access different funds, you know, how can we grow the Start funds to be able to service a growing membership, a growing local membership, and 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 give our members, you know, access to the funds that they need. So there, there are many layers to this question of governance. Um, uh, but just so you know, we're, we're thinking about it. We have a design at global level. Um, we're transitioning right now, and we're having conversations among international organizations, with local organizations, with the entire membership about how we transition from where we are today to a governance in the future, which is much more distributed and much more equitable in its, in its workings. Thank you, thank you, Christina. These are all very difficult and critical questions. Without, without you all there, it would be really, really difficult. So the next question, I will be requesting Sabit from the DFAP. Uh, would you please make your questions? And I think uh, Ira could answer that one. 
to solve it from the attack. Uh, hi, Sajid. I think Ira has already answered that somewhat um, when she talked about the private sector. But thank you, anyway, for bringing that up. Yeah, thank I mean, you, Sajid. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, I think I answered. Uh, thank you, Sanjeev. All right, thank you. Uh, the, there are quite a few questions, which are in fact big questions from Kobita from Oxfam. Would you like to share your question in, in, in the shortest possible manner, Kobita D? Are you there? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, ma, not all our questions actually. First part is mainly the, about uh, progress and thank you and congratulations uh, to Stop Part Bangladesh as well as the Global Start Network. And then uh, uh, actually I have four questions. Uh, the first three are around uh, how we have been uh, working with the uh, women rights organizations, especially local women rights organization, women led organization and network of women rights organization and, and so many on that. Uh, this is mainly to uh, aim that uh, uh, gender equality, women and girls and other marginalized group rights are addressed through the even the early phases because uh, most of the you know crucial uh, uh, impact happens in the very very early ages and also uh, mid term and long term. And the second part is that uh, if ESTAR does already, so what are the key learnings? And uh, that could be actually my take uh, from this workshop because I was very interested. Uh, we have been working on the localization. And if you find any recommendation that how other networks uh, and uh, at a national, regional and global level to look at, uh, to address uh, and to bring more women rights organization in the localization process. Uh, I had another question at the last part, like as we know that start um, is, is uh, no, uh, you know, awarding uh, organizations who are uh, local as well as national as well as um, international. So when a local organization is competing with the uh, international organization in the same scale or a same call or same bid. So the work, uh, national organization or local organization may not have the equal amount of expertise and experiences at, uh, and bringing global expertise. So how does uh, start uh, ensure the equity when they select the project? Uh, whether any equity or if not, so how you ensure, for example, like ex international organization working in 30 countries and then why uh, local organization working only few districts but have very good presence on the local level. So how you, you ensure this selection criteria? Sorry for so many questions in one go because I'm really very, very curious to learn from START and I'm, I'm one of the, you know, out of box uh, START, uh, uh, sorry, outside from a start, I'm one of your advocates in different way and different level. So I, I love and I, I feel proud to know and, and learn from you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Kopitadi. I will, I will start with the second question. So uh, as we said in the presentation, you have seen that only in 2020, around 80% plus fund went directly to local organizations. And if we calculate uh, from 2017 till 2020, it's uh, around 60% of fund going to the local organizations directly. And most importantly, and very interestingly, uh, it's a very equal uh, competitive process where the local national international organizations, they submit proposals and the project selection committee of, of the start from Bangladesh, they select all the proposals. Uh, so if we are talking about equity, I mean, this is what we were also looking into things. So whether should there be a bias preference towards the local organizations or should we be more of, you know, kind of trying to build their capacity and ensuring that they are also submitting good proposals and implementing good responses. And in fact, uh, you know, we have seen that the local organizations, they're accessing fund directly. And I mean, more of the local proposals, local organizations proposals, are being selected by the project selection committees and the project quality are also, also good. Uh, and then that leads to the questions around the women-led organizations or the women rights organizations. If you look at the, the recent grand bargain work stream to localization study report that 
they did around the different pool funding mechanisms. Uh, there are uh, quite a good number of quotes from the different uh, women rights organizations and women led organizations in terms of the value addition of the start from Bangladesh. As you know that one of the, in two different cases, uh, one of the women rights organizations, they laid a consortium of NGOs and INGOs. And uh, in terms of the amount, it was around 2.5 uh, crore uh, Bangladesh Taka. So which means that the organizations are also leading the women-led organizations from the front. There are definitely certain challenges in terms of uh, staff ratio while we work at the, at the response level. We see that we have to work a lot around that and to ensure that more and more women are becoming uh, inspired to work in the emergency response sectors. And then when the reason why I'm saying that when we talk about women-led organizations, it doesn't mean only that women are at the head of the organizations, but women are leading from different layers of the organizations, starting from very much from being a volunteer or a project manager or an officer uh, working with the community directly. Uh, thank you, thank you, Kobita. Uh, the, the, I think we do not have enough time with us. Uh, I have a very interesting question from Max uh, from FCDO. And that was, I think, uh, what are the blockers and challenges of expanding local NGO members in, in Bangladesh? So Max, would you like to uh, clarify your questions? And then, uh, yeah, I mean, depending on whether I understand it, I, I, will, I will try to address your, your concern. I will be also taking support from other uh, people in this particular uh, event, uh, Rabia, Esan, in terms of you know the blockers and challenges of the donor base. So Max, over to you. I think Max may have left. Um, I can't see. Okay. Participant list. Okay. So the question was the blockers and challenges to expanding local NGO membership in Bangladesh. Uh, so what are the blockers to diversify the donor base? So these are the two, two big questions. So uh, SMY, because uh, you lead a local uh, angel network. So oh, can I go back to you and for your reflection? SM. Okay. Uh, thank you. One of the blocker that we raise all the time is not for start fund Bangladesh. It's uh, in general getting in touch with the international organizations or donors is the due diligence mechanism. The local organizations uh, have definitely, we expect that their efficiency will be increased and there are certain common uh, parameters which are uh, generic in nature and which is tested by all NGOs uh, and during a start fund due diligence process is also found that open. And every time it is done individually. And so one local organization has to face many tests uh, of uh, similar questions. Uh, so if there can be a, a generic frame agreed at the global level or the international level, at least among the few uh, localization promoters, signatories of uh, Tata for Change, for example, uh, this can be one way forward to encourage more and more local organizations to join. And definitely from governance perspective, there uh, might be some ceiling, some target of okay, what can be manageable. There can be different tier of uh, membership base. So those can be taken up at the local level, depending on the context. So I just flag up one uh, uh, challenge or blocker that uh, affects the participation of the local organizations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, SM Bhai. Uh, we, uh, I think we have already uh, at the very end of our uh, event. Uh, there is uh, one question uh, that I can take, but that I think that's the last questions I will be taking. And uh, it's a question from Kazi from the UN Regional Coordinator Office. So the question is how start fund help local organizations to build their own network. Uh, 
Rabia, are you there? Okay, I think uh, Rabia is already uh, left. Uh, so, I mean, the way we are trying to understand, I mean, while we have discussions with the different local member organizations that what are the kind of, uh, you know, barriers in terms of uh, them accessing the different networks in terms of them representing in the different networks. And one of the big challenges they some, most of the time say that uh, they, 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 they feel that there is an absence of stronger uh, local uh, networks. There are few like NAHAB and BDCSO processes, and uh, they really feel that uh, there is an issue around organizations uh, understanding each other from their own perspectives, understanding the challenges in terms of exploring the, the complementarities where they can support each other and how they can be more unified in terms of uh, negotiating with their counterparts or bargaining while they are negotiating uh, with the donors or with their INGO uh, partners. Uh, but they are also saying that there are issues around, you know, that most of the donor funds are very much directed mostly and very much project based uh, and which does not give that enough space for the organizations to to invest in their uh, network uh, development at the same time there are certain platforms at the national level where the local ngos are representing and being more active nowadays which they feel that could be very very instrumental for them uh, to, to build their own network and they really see a value also with the start fund uh, platform and the localization working group that recently formed that is really giving them the platform to address their concerns at the national level to different clusters and working groups uh, in the humanitarian coordination task team. So with that, I will be ending uh, the, the question answer uh, session. Uh, so again, thank you to everyone for joining today and listening and taking part in the discussion. We really valued the inputs. We'd like to thank Rabia, Joan Michel, Christina, and Nick for their opening remarks and to Farzana Zahin for their presentation. Uh, we will share our brochure with you after the event and we would love to talk to organizations in more detail about how they can support Start from Bangladesh in the coming years and we will share contact details. Thanks everyone again and had a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.